Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. Uh, so I'm with Vin Vrinda Grover and Patricia Mukim, and the Supreme Court has just stayed the uh, order that uh, uh, Patricia Mukim, who was charged with contempt of court for her article, should judges be the judge? And uh, so, ma'am, uh, I'll come to you and ask you the question: uh, What does this uh, case and uh, exactly uh, the stay mean for freedom of press in the country? So on 10th uh, December 2018, Patricia Mukim, who is, who is the long-time editor of Shillong Times, was uh, had published an article relating to certain judicial proceedings going on in Meghalaya High Court, uh, which to my mind are completely protected by fair and accurate reporting. Uh, and it is, I think, the business of the press to inform people about judicial proceedings. Uh, in, uh, because of that, she was uh, uh, given a notice, both she and the publisher of Shillong Times uh, were issued notice for contempt of court by a single judge of the Meghalaya High Court. Uh, the, it culminated in uh, an order and a judgment and sentence sentencing her and the publisher to sitting in the court till the rising of the court as well as a fine was imposed on both the publisher and the editor each of 2 lakh rupees failing to pay which they would have to suffer a simple imprisonment of 6 months as well as their paper Shillong Times which is a long standing newspaper of uh, Meghalaya would in the words of the court automatically come to an end be banned uh, this conviction and sentence for contempt of court uh, under law is totally uh, wrong and arbitrary and disproportionate. Uh, there was no contempt in my view committed and the sentence and the order has been uh, sustained and suspended by the Supreme Court today. Uh, what it implies is that as long as the freedom of press is there, as long as the court is protecting the freedom of press uh, to inform the citizenry of what is happening, whether inside the courtroom or outside the courtroom, uh, the, it will be protected and the power of contempt uh, it has, which has been invoked uh, in my view uh, disproportionately and wrongly in this case is, uh, is, is perhaps something that will now be discussed before the Supreme Court further whether it at all can be invoked in a case of this nature. So ma'am, coming back to the nature of the allegations uh, where uh, it is stated that it was, like you said, it was contempt of court. Uh, and ma'am, are there any uh, precedents which show that, uh, you know, contempt of uh, contempt of co court, like how it is mentioned in this case, uh, will lead to outcomes which actually suppress freedom of press? Well, I think these are issues that are discussed in uh, judgments uh, and each case has to be assessed and appreciated on the basis of its factual matrix. In this particular case, I am saying that no contempt of court is made out and that power should not have been invoked and that power should only be invoked and sentencing under this should only be done when the law says there is substantial interference with the administration of justice, which is not the case here. Okay. Uh, so ma'am, last night, uh, Press Council of India also issued a statement saying that they will, uh, you know, uh, impede the case. And uh, in fact, there's been a lot of crowdsourcing to fund for the uh, fine that has been issued on... Uh, well, the fine has been has been stayed by the Honorable Supreme Court. So, yeah. So ma'am, what do you think about support from the readers, people in Meghalaya, the Press Council? I, I, I cannot no, comment I on that. On I cannot that comment on that. sourcing was also that the public of Meghalaya will fight for greater freedom of expression, freedom of the press. That's what they want to do. It was not just to raise money for the fine, but also to fight for the larger press freedom.